So last year, hundreds of young people in Bristol threw a statue of the slave owner, Edward Colston, into the city's harbour. Now, Colston is rightly reviled uh, by people as a, as, as a governor of the Royal African Company that in his time controlled much of the transatlantic slave trade. But that company was actually established by a British monarch and the, the, the wealth that the company acquired was piled upon the huge amounts of wealth that the, the monarchy today continues to sit on. So you could say that in the British monarchy, the British royal family, we have here a living monument to all of the crimes of British imperialism. And thanks to Meghan and Harry's interview over the course of the weekend, we, we've been given a brief glimpse into precisely how deeply this racist and colonial history runs through this institution. Um, and among many of the, uh, the, the revelations of which I'm sure you've heard and are aware, uh, one in particular I think shocked a lot of people and that was the fact that an unnamed uh, royal expressed to Harry his concern at how dark, or his or her concern, uh, at how dark the skin of their unborn child would be uh, once they were finally born. And all of this, I think, and, and, and all of the rest of the revelations have shown for millions of people that the, you know, all of these things that were lauded in the royal family, their concern for pure pedigree, is nothing more basically than racist white supremacy. Um, their celebrated cool detachment is basically little more than a callous vengefulness. And uh, it's no wonder, therefore, that in this context, the, the complete lack of uh, humanity that this uh, family has shown, that it's led to a certain outpouring of sympathy for uh, Meghan and Harry. Um, now, uh, Meghan and Harry will be okay. They will, uh, they will be able to look after themselves and they, I'm sure they will become tremendously wealthy off of these interviews. But these interviews are a real problem for British capitalism because this isn't just any old family that these people are exposing. Uh, this is a family which is part and parcel of the British ruling class. Their racism and their callousness are not accidental. They are, they are part of the organic racism and callousness of the, uh, of the capitalist system of which they form a part. Um, and the royal family are very important, actually, to the, uh, the British ruling class. Now, some people um, oppose the monarchy as a waste of money, uh, but to the ruling class, it's a lot more than simply uh, an expense. Um, under the British constitution, the monarch actually has completely unlimited powers, and it's not for nothing that they refer to it as Her Majesty's government and Her Majesty's armed forces. It's actually an extremely powerful reserve weapon in the hands of the capitalist class. Now, in normal times, we're allowed to believe that this is merely a formality, the powers that the monarch enjoys. But in times of crisis, should the interests of the British ruling class be threatened, particularly if it were threatened by the, the, the working class organised, um, they would not hesitate to use these reserve powers, basically. Um, and it is for this reason, above all else, that uh, having seen the monarchy exposed for what it is, we need to topple this feudal and racist relic, relic and this, uh, this, this living monument to the crimes of British imperialism in just the, way, the same way that the, uh, the, the statues of slave owners were toppled last summer. That is why we, as Socialist Appeal, we raised the demand of the need for a socialist republic.